Sometimes it just don't pay to be the Medicare for the Lazy Man podcast. The very best Medicare podcast in the whole wide world. And now crapped out once again, Medicare expert Doug Jones. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Medicare for the Lazy Man podcast. We're so happy to have you here today. It's going to be an exciting, thrill-packed delve into the Medicare morass, as some people call it. I like to think that if you pay enough attention to Medicare for the Lazy Man, you won't consider Medicare to be a morass. You'll consider it to be a bunch of silly rules and regulations that nobody understands, but you won't be afraid of them because you will have excellent, excellent advice. The way you would get that advice, the way you would acquire the knowledge to deal with Medicare in a safe and sane way would be to buy my book, Medicare for the Lazy Man 2023. It's uh, not very expensive. It's not a heavy tome that will take days and days to plow through. Uh, you won't have to take copious notes. It's in, in uh, plain English. It's in plain modern American English. You won't find any uh, old or middle English uh, terminology. It's basically very user-friendly. When you finish reading that book, you're going to know more about Medicare than almost anybody else in your playground group or your country club or your social strata because there aren't many people who know much about medicare mostly it's the people who have read my book or the people like me who have been in the insurance business for years and years and years and years and so i'm guessing that you are not in the insurance business probably you don't listen to this podcast because what good would it do you but the people who are listening are avid medicare aficionados at least they want to know that they aren't going to make any mistakes it'll cost them money jeopardize the coverage or um they will uh, you know be lacking in quality of care none of that's going to happen if you read and then follow the suggestions in medicare for the lazy man 2023 and i'm so happy to be here today with my friend and podcast engineer randy carson hello randy how are things today Oh, I am just perfectly fine. As you I'm can glad see, I'm I'm sitting out in my backyard right to the side of my pool. Uh, let's see. Does that match the direction the sun normally comes up? <laughs> no, the, that, your sun never seems to move. It doesn't matter no, what, it doesn't. what time I see you. It's It could be early morning, it could be late in the afternoon, and it looks the same. The shadows don't seem to move. The sun never sets on my house. Well, uh, or the British Empire. Well, I guess maybe it does now. <laughs> the British Empire is a little smaller than it used to be. Well, anyway, well, it's, it's getting a lot smaller, too. Uh, the, the royals are dwindling off like, you know, who flew the coop? But, you well, know, if, that's if a just, whole different story. If they would just keep their mouths shut and uh, follow the rules like the queen did, you know, I will do what's right for my countrymen, my um, subjects. And she was um, yep. well behaved. She was a lady, but some of these uh, modern royals are not nearly so uh, civilized. No, they are not. Well, I've they never are seen not a, even close. I've never seen a UPS truck go by so quickly. That guy's in a hurry. Must be uh, approaching lunchtime for him. I almost it's probably. To, yeah. Well, it's a yeah. I'm sure it is. And they just passed a Prime, uh, an Amazon Prime truck going the other way. We're getting a lot of deliveries here today. I hope that means the economy is picking up. Generally speaking, when those trucks are all over the place, they're delivering things that people have bought, and that's good for the economy, I I think. At least that's my it is. philosophy. It is. So it is. I absolutely is. I should uh, probably get to work because last episode we we yacked on for about a third of the episode, and that wasn't that wasn't um, good for those who want to learn about Medicare or things related to uh, our age group. Randy and I are fairly close in age, and I assume that most of the listeners are uh, approaching uh, mid sixties. Probably that's probably what the uh, ideal uh, audience the uh, the target market for our uh, podcast information is, wouldn't you say? 
So, yeah. yeah, of course, I, I'm 29 and holding. I don't know about you, but. Well, uh, you remember Roy, who was a guest on this podcast. Was he a guest? Yes, he was. And he's going to yes. come back. He's going to come back and describe the recovery from his shoulder replacement surgery. He uh, has decided to start counting backwards. Oh, okay. So I, that let's works. see. Let's see how well that works out for him. I may do the same thing, but I want to watch his progress for a year or two and see if it's helpful, if it solves any problems. Yeah, well, you know, let me know because I I might want to do that myself. All righty, I will do that. Um, so what do we have? We got a stack of things. The the most severe critic that gives me a letter grade for each podcast episode seems to enjoy having several short uh, subject uh, items of subject matter. And so I'm going to accommodate her on her, this, her birthday celebration. That celebration never seems to end. It goes on and on and on. Happy birthday, darling. And um, we will be uh, celebrating this birthday. I think probably in the next two days, uh, you'll, we'll have even more opportunity to mention it on podcast recordings. But the first item that floated to the top of my pile is the U.S. Appeals Court walks back COVID-19 vaccine requirements for federal employees. Now, this is less than a week old. A federal appeals court on Thursday upheld a lower court decision to block the government from enforcing its COVID-19 vaccine requirements on federal employees, reversing a previous ruling from a smaller panel of its own judges. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled uh, in a rare end bank E-N-B-A-N-C, I don't know what that means, uh, rehearing that a preliminary nationwide injunction on the vaccine mandate should remain in place while the case proceeds. I think the more that they can do to stop these little Hitlers from um, causing people economic stress, from uh, firing them, from demoting them because they've chosen not to be uh, injected with a vaccine that doesn't seem to be very effective is a very good thing. Let's make sure these people don't ever force the American public to dress up in masks and, and uh, to, uh, you know, they let them decide for themselves. That's what freedom is all about. And by yump and Yemeni, we are in a free country. Um, new clients have asked me questions. So um, I have one here from Kevin. Let me find out what his question is. My name is Kevin. And I, let's see. Yep. I'm going to put that one aside. I should have highlighted what Kevin was asking about. Here's one from Paul. Paul says, I live in Kansas. Does my agent need to live in Kansas? I would imagine you don't live in Kansas. <laughs> Sounds almost accusatory, Paul. Um, and then he had another question. Is the bank draft authorization for your fees? If so, could you give me an idea how much those fees would be? Two very pithy questions from Paul in Kansas. First of all, Paul, I don't need to live in Kansas or whatever state you're in. I just need to have a license to sell insurance in order to be able to help you out and to help you acquire Medicare supplement insurance that will make your Medicare experience almost bulletproof. So, no, I don't need to live where you live, but I do need to have a license to sell insurance. And I have a license in all 50 states plus the District of Columbia. The next question he asked was whether the bank draft authorization information is for my personal fees. And the answer to that, Paul, is that I don't charge any fees. The insurance company that I do the most business with says that you can pay your initial premium two ways. One way is to mail a check in with your application and that check would be payable to the insurance company. The other way is to have an automatic bank draft. In order to do an automatic bank draft, I have to tell them your bank account's information. What bank is it in? What's the uh, bank account number? And what is the routing number for your particular bank? And that way they can draw the money out for your initial premium and subsequent premiums if you want to pay for your Medicare supplement that way. Now, the reason they do that is because a contract is being formed. There's an offer, there's an acceptance, 
and there's a change, an exchange of valuable consideration. So the offer is the insurance application. The acceptance is their underwriting department accepting you as a risk. That's what we call people in the insurance business. You're not people, you're risks. So when you're accepted as a risk, then the one element of a contract remaining is the exchange of valuable consideration. And that is going to be your um, money that comes out of your checking account. So uh, that's why I have to ask for the um, bank account information from your account. And that's uh, not having anything to do with fees that I might charge. I get paid by the insurance company if you buy a product based on my recommendation. So they send me a couple of bucks every time you pay a premium. And that's how I get paid. There is no fee that I charge any of my clients. Now we've got a, uh, one of our, one of my favorite listeners in, uh, Texas is named Steve. He's been with us for a long time, and he has always provided a lot of interesting podcast content. And so he sent me something. uh, Basically, it was a question. He said, it is my understanding that TRICARE is the Medicare supplement to die for. Is this correct? And I said, genius, that should make for excellent podcast subject matter. I wish I had thought of it myself. So that was my way of thanking Steve for sharing his curiosity about TRICARE. Uh, I'm sure that he knows more about TRICARE than he let on there, but he was uh, leading me into an interesting subject. Um, The VA, you know, a lot of people that served in the military have VA coverage, and I believe TRICARE is for those who have served longer than just uh, the stint that they would have served in a uh, draft situation. So when we were drafted into the Army back in the 60s, that was for a two-year stint. If you uh, went to the Navy, it was longer. And um, the uh, when you got out, the VA had certain limited responsibilities for some of your care. But the VA isn't always convenient to find. And TRICARE I believe is the VA on steroids. It's for for people who have served uh, as lifers, basically, uh, probably twenty years or more, and it's for them and for their families. But let me uh, tear into this article and see if I can make some sense out of it. Tricare is the Uniformed Services Health Care Program for active duty service members, active duty family members, National Guard and reserve members and their family members, retirees and retiree family members, survivors, and certain former spouses worldwide. TRICARE brings together the health care resources of the military health system, such as military hospitals and clinics, with a network of civilian health care professionals, institutions, pharmacies, and suppliers to foster, protect, sustain, and restore health for those entrusted to their care. So there are a lot of links here that you can click on. Uh, And that's got some questions and answers. Where can I get care? The military health system is a global comprehensive integrated system. You may be able to get care from a military hospital or clinic, a civilian network or providers, a network of providers, or TRICARE authorized non-network providers. And it says military hospitals and clinics. The Department of Defense operates many military hospitals and clinics. You may be able to seek care there depending on where you are, what plan you have, and your beneficiary category. Civilians can also seek care. Let's see. Oh, you can also seek care from a civilian network of TRICARE authorized providers. This network depends on what region you're in. And then With this article, you can always uh, click on these links and they'll give you more detail. This article, uh, I I, uh, Googled TRICARE and uh, this came up. It's like uh, it's got an official TRICARE logo on it. And at the top, it says all impacted Army, Active Guard and Reserve records and TRICARE health plans have been corrected and reinstated. I don't know what the heck that means. So it says uh, to search for a provider in one of our provider directories, please find a doctor tool to get you to the right directory. 
and on and on. There are different plan options depending on who you are. If you're new to TRICARE, select the option below that best describes you for more information. And they have categories, new active duty service members, a new spouse, a National Guard and Reserve members, family members of National Guard or Reserve members, foreign service members and their families. What plans can I choose from? There are a number of TRICARE plans available. Remember that your eligibility for these plans depends on who you are and your sponsor, on who you and your sponsor are. And then they have a link that's a plan finder. And uh, boy, this this is a treasure trove of TRICARE information. How do I enroll in TRICARE? Once you know your plan, visit the TRICARE enrollment page which is tricare.mil, M-I-L, slash plans, slash enroll, for steps on how to enroll or purchase a plan. How much does TRICARE cost? Each TRICARE plan has a different cost for care and coverage. You can use the TRICARE Compare Cost uh, tool to view and compare costs. I'd say that if you're interested in TRICARE details, this is going to be the article for you. I wish I could hold it up to the microphone and let you uh, gather together all the information contained here, but I just can't do that. So you're going to have to find this article on your own. Uh, Where can I get care? Depending on your plan, you'll get care from either a military hospital or clinic or a civilian provider. Uh, what does TRICARE cover? You can use the TRICARE Covered Services tool to see if something is covered or not by searching keywords or browsing common categories. Can I get TRICARE worldwide? Yes, TRICARE is available worldwide. There are two TRICARE regions in the U.S., TRICARE East and TRICARE West, and there's one overseas region with three areas, Eurasia and Africa are one area, Latin America and Canada, and then the Pacific. So the uh, getting started is easy. Confirm your eligibility online. Explore your health plan options. Where can I find more information on TRICARE? Uh, TRICARE TRICARE.mil appears to be the website of choice for anybody researching TRICARE. So if you're interested in TRICARE, then uh, I would say that's what you do. I've had enough questions over the years. People want to know whether having VA uh, and and or TRICARE, TRICARE is a little more intense, regular VA for people who were in the military for a while uh, and have certain uh, VA categorizations. I think everybody gets a a number from like one to eight or something like that. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know all the details, but if your classification is high enough, the VA is going to jump through hoops to, uh, handle your treatment. But if it's typical of uh, most of my friends who were inductees for a short period of time, and then they went back to civilian life, then the VA is uh, going to be less convenient for you to use. And it's my understanding that you've got to present yourself at a VA facility for treatment in most cases, uh, unless you are a lifer. And that means that uh, you may or may not have a facility located in a convenient location uh, that would allow you to get there easily. And um, I know I had a cousin, uh, hard to call him a cousin. He's about a hundred years older than me, but he, (laughs) he uh, went to the VA in Houston from his home in West Texas in his uh, Pontiac Trans Am uh, in a very speedy manner. And I know this because uh, another of my cousins accompanied him and tried to keep him out of court uh, whenever possible, but this guy probably uh, pushing 95 years old. And uh, as long as that Texas road was straight, that Trans Am had a brick on the accelerator and he collected tickets from police officers like uh, other people collect Kleenex. So uh, he's gone now, but um, he was an interesting guy and I wish I had been able to get to know him a little better. Ooh, ooh, here's something Randy hates. I don't like to dwell on things Randy don't doesn't like, but uh, I, it's in my pile and I have to get rid of it. But it's uh, a report that permanent daylight savings time is being pushed in Congress. Now, I don't like the idea of forcing all the states to be on the same time. So I would venture to guess that it's uh, freedom, you know, is 
freedom isn't free, as they say, but one of the costs of freedom is uh, voluntary um, cooperation with the time L- um time zones that have been set up. They were originally set up by the railroads in the 1800s. <clears throat> and uh, now the federal government is thinking about forcing all the states, everybody in the United States to adhere to the same set of rules. I'm not in favor of that, but if it happens, this would be the least objectionable to me because I love daylight savings time. I'm a late riser. And so I want it to be light when I wake up, not dark because I'm not an early riser. And when I stay up at night, I'd like to have more daylight to get more things done rather than have it get dark at four o'clock in the afternoon as it does in Illinois during the winter time. So I'm in favor of daylight savings time all year round. Randy has expressed the view to me that that is not what he would prefer. Uh, but then, of course, his his mind is in Ireland half the time anyway. I'm not even sure if he's listening to this podcast right now, but I'd like to think he is. So uh, a while back, I joined a uh, or I joined I I introduced us to a, uh, a an organization called Oxfam that wants to modify the English language. And when you look at their 92-page English language guide that tells us what we're allowed to say and what we're not allowed to say, it has some warnings in there. It says, please take care in the reading of this guide and prioritize your well-being. As you read this guide, you may experience discomfort. For example, many people don't personally associate with the concept of having privilege nor recognize the relative advantages they may be afforded, meaning you're privileged whether you think you are privileged or not. So you are at fault for any other any other person's um, uh, misfortune, uh, whether or not you've ever contacted them, done anything to them or not. Uh, however, we must face these challenges and embrace discomfort to move forward. Uh, that, that, uh, only by naming understanding and tackling the root causes of inequality and poverty that are endemic, that are endemic in our culture. Can we create genuine change and work toward real equality? Well, that gives you a little hint as to where these people are coming from. Western civilization is evil and is the root cause of all unhappiness in the world because we don't want to see anybody succeed and prosper. Uh, Of course, we all know that's a crock, but they've put together a 92-page guide that is uh, replete with cartoon characters and silliness. And so I just like to share a few of these things. Ableism, ableism, um, discrimination in favor of non-disabled people, the practices and uh, uh, committing attitudes in society. Boy, hard to read on the uh, the white printing on the dark green color. You'd think that would be really easy to read. So the, then the question is, why? Why is this an issue for them? An ableist society is one that treats non-disabled individuals as the standard of normal living, which results in public and private places and services, education and social work that are built to serve only non-disabled people, thereby creating barriers for people with disabilities. Not having a disability is not generally acknowledged as a privilege, but it is frequently assumed to be the norm. The people we work with include people with disabilities who will be differently and disproportionately affected by the issues we work on. We must work to understand and support the needs of all people and actively respond to addresses uh, to address the needs of people with disabilities. Well, I can't wait. This, this is going to be a nice little addition to our uh, routine podcast information Um, is affected by is one of their uh, phrases. Uh, You have to say is affected by, you have to avoid saying, is afflicted with. I don't understand what the difference is. If somebody has something, they're affected by something, but they can't. we can't say they're afflicted with something. We can't say they suffer from, or we can't say there is a, they're a, they are a victim of. And the reason uh, is the phrase is affected by does not define a person by a health issue, and it avoids negative connotations. 
Oh, these people really stretch to find out. That. Uh, let me read one more. You have to say mobility impaired, a person with mobility or physical impairment. And we avoid saying wheelchair bound or crippled. Now, why do we do this? Not all people with mobility issues use wheelchairs. So we can't refer to wheelchairs. We can't say they're wheelchair bound. Um, the preferred phrases are technologically uh, inaccurate. No, accurate. The preferred phrases are technically accurate and avoid negative connotations. Ooh, there is so much more material here for us to enjoy. Um, we'll be delving into this as time goes by. But um, I want you to know that this thing is out there. And if you do a search for the Oxfam Inclusive Language Guide, then you can read along with me. So that'll be kind of cool. The Oxfam Inclusivity Guide or the Inclusive Language Guide. As I look at the big old clock on the wall, it looks like I've burned up most of my time for today. I hope I don't get in trouble with the chip, uh, the chipmunks. No, the crickets. Randy, have the crickets spoken yet or not? <laughs> the chipmunks have not said a word, but the well, crickets that's good. have. The, the chipmunks should just keep their mouths shut and go away. Yeah, I, I was going to. Is, so is it true then that if you can say or you shouldn't say someone is afflicted by a gunshot? You could say they're affected by, but you cannot say they're afflicted by because that means the gunshot defines them, if I'm oh, reading this okay. correctly. So well, that, we've got a lot. We've obviously got a lot to discuss on that particular article then. Well, there's a there's more. This is a 92 page guide, and I'm only and you're ju you're just on page one, right? <laughs> actually, actually, I just skipped the first ten pages. They're so stupid that I didn't even want to waste our time on them. So I'm on page 18. We just okay. finished page 18 today, and we can uh, move on to page 19 next time uh, this thing I, floats to the surface. I'm looking forward to it. I knew you would be. I knew you would be. So, as you have heard, the crickets have chirped. That means that our 75 cents worth of airtime is used up, and we need to land the plane, bring the bus into the station, and whatever other metaphor we would like to use today. But before we do that, I want to thank everyone for joining us. We really appreciate it. Without you, it wouldn't be nearly as much fun as it is with you. And we really like the fact that you could have been a hundred different places doing a hundred different things and you weren't, you were with us spending a little bit of time with Medicare for the lazy man podcast. And Doug touched on the, the various ways that you can acquire the book, but he always stops just short of asking for your assistance in going out and finding a way to give us a rating on the podcast and or the book because we are always in the midst of the rating wars. You know, five stars would be very, very appreciative. But we need to sign off today. So you have just spent about 32 and a half minutes with Doug Jones, the anti-insurance insurance guy from Oklahoma, now living in his fortress of solitude in the high altitudes behind Cave Creek, Arizona. And I think today... We're going to chalk him in at about 18.4. Jeez, it just keeps getting higher and higher. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. See you next time.